Hi everybody and welcome back to another Legends of Runeterra video and gameplay. Today I'm bringing you a dragon deck. This is called Hagrid's Crew. And we're going to be going over dragons a little bit and my general thoughts on them. Uh, first let's talk about the deck a little bit. We have here a complete dragon deck. We're running most of the dragons except for maybe the Inv of Zavo. Um, yeah, we're running pretty much all of the other dragons. And on um, this deck, we're also running two Mobilize, and we're running uh, Dragon's Clutch. The two actually work together pretty well, because we can draw two dragons from our deck, and then use Mobilize, get them to like a decent range, and be able to play them on subsequent rounds. Um, usually when you run Mobilize, you want to put it in a deck that is um, fairly, uh, I guess, unit heavy, so that you don't have to you don't waste a lot of its potential by not being able to reduce the cost of spells in hand. But the Dragon's Clutch kind of works in our favor in that regard because we can fill up our hand with units and then save up the mobilize and then use it, get some pretty good value out of it and be able to play um, things like Aurelian Soul earlier and the Infinite Mind Splitter. Alright, so let's see. Another important part of this sort of... Um, cost reduction is the Herald of the Dragons. Herald of the Dragons, in my opinion, is somewhat an understated card. It's 1-1, one, one, it's a 2-drop, but your dragon allies cost 1 less. And what this allows us to do is, really, we're looking for this turn 1, but it's pretty easy for the enemy to take it out. Or not. We're, we're looking for it early on in the game so that we can play it on turn 2. Um, and then what that allows us to do is play the White Flame Protector turn Three, because we don't have a dragon that we can play on turn three. We are forced to kind of include the White Flame Protector for a decent curve, and hopefully we have the Herald of the Dragons by that point. Alright, so yeah, as I mentioned, the White Flame Protector is a four cost. That is the least um, kind of cost of any of these dragons. The the least amount that any of the dragons cost is four, and then we've got the Fuse Firebrand at five, Screeching Dragon at five, and then the Infinite Mind Splitter at 8 and Aurelian Soul at 10. So you can see they're really, really expensive units. And um, yeah, if we're forced to kind of include these dragons to make use of Dragon's Clutch, then we are, um, then we pretty much have to include most dragons in the deck if we want this to make sense. All right. Um, yeah, this is definitely not the most efficient deck, but I really wanted to just make a dragon central dragon package deck, so we are kind of forced, if we're doing that, to include all of the dragon cards, including Herald of the Dragons and Dragon Clutch, and then subsequently all of the other dragons as well. Alright, so let's talk about dragons a little bit. So, um, actually, I think thematically dragons are really cool. Really, really cool, actually. They offer kind of a different flavor that we haven't had before. Obviously, we're going to get more when Shivana is released, and we'll get some more from Demacia besides the um, the Screeching Dragon. The concept of Fury is also pretty cool here, where you, when you kill a unit, it grants them plus one, plus one. So the synergy with Demacia works really well because we can barrier them with things like Repose and with Bright Still Protector, and then we can use single combat. We can use Concerted Strike and things like Judgment to get these dragons to be massive. So thematically it's pretty cool. The Fury concept is pretty cool as well. Alright, so the main problem that we run into with the dragons is, we kind of mentioned it before, their cost. This is kind of like a mid-range deck. We are wanting to kind of flood our board with these big units that are hard to take out, and then um, defeat the enemy, I guess, by having all these big units on the board and able to overpower the enemy units. So the problem with that is, one, we are very dependent on getting this Herald of the Dragons, which we can only put three of in the deck, and we won't necessarily draw it. We're dependent on this to lower the mana cost of our dragons so that we can get them on the board when they are most efficient. And then the second problem with that is they don't really have abilities that allow them to punch through the enemy. And so they're taking out enemies, but while they're taking them out, they're also not making contact with the Nexus and dealing damage to it. And this is a big problem once you get to later in the game because it becomes less about um, how highly statted your, your units are, but more doing direct damage to the Nexus. If they can put out chump blockers at a, an efficient, you know, costs and they're able to fill their board over and over again, then our dragons don't really get value if we can't make contact with the Nexus. So that's a big problem. Um, the Infinite Mind Splitter does help a little bit with that because we can stun the enemies, but if they have too many low-cost enemies and they can just replace them or, or they have ways to um, deal with the Infinite Mind Splitter. So there's that. Um, yeah, so really in order for dragons to become a... a 
an efficient archetype, we need to get some lower costing dragons, which kind of, I think that Shivana will most likely, this is kind of a bold prediction, prediction. I think Shivana is going to be a three cost champion that we're going to be able to put out on turn three. And then um, that doesn't really affect her with Herald of the Dragons because we have to play Herald of the Dragons and then the next round we can play Shivana for two mana. So I think that Shivana will be a three uh, mana dragon and I think that she's not going to be a dragon at first until she levels up and then she turns into a dragon and then she'll get like the dragon synergies once she levels up um, we'll see if I'm right about that but that's kind of what I'm thinking so we're going to get some more earlier game Demacia cards I think that before Shivana's release the Herald of the Dragons is also going to get at least a health buff I really think that this card is understated even for, you know, it's got a pretty powerful ability, but what is this doing for you if the enemy can take it out on um, the same round you play it? And there are a ton of two cost spells that can take out Herald of the Dragons, uh, Mystic Shock, Thermogenic Beam, um, Make It Rain, and Vile Feast, all two cost cards that can take her out automatically, so I think that, that this is going to get a buff. I think it's going to get a a one health buff and that should help it be able to survive a little bit longer because really you don't get value out of this card unless you have a lot of dragons in hand and you're able to put them down. Um, yeah, so that's kind of my thoughts. They're going to buff up dragons before Shivana's release and then the Demacia we're going to get quite a few new dragons that are going to have an earlier curve and give us a little more variety with how we play them. It runs as a mid-range deck but it is a little bit too slow to be an efficient mid-range deck and, being, and it's not allowing us to win during the mid game all right and then aurelian soul he he you can get him out quite a bit earlier if you got one herald of the dragon down if you use mobilize once while he's down you can get him out on turn eight um that's super that's super important right now because the enemy is able to do that as well with kind of their mana ramp decks and their ability to get him out earlier and then with aurelian soul if you're going against like another aurelian soul and there are so many of them right now it, it almost like whoever gets the best celestial cards is pretty much the one that's going to win the game um if they get like if the enemy gets obliterates and you don't and they can take out your aurelian soul i mean they're going to win the game so aurelian soul is kind of up in the air for me he's he's also a cool thematic uh the dragon and as well as a celestial but it seems like when you're playing against other aurelian souls it's just kind of luck on who is going to win the game at that point and who has the better celestial cards so um, anyway, that's about it. I've got a gameplay attached to this video. This is definitely not a competitive deck, but it is super fun to play with and play around with and try to get wins with. Uh, yeah, I really enjoy the dragons, so um, you should definitely try it out. Just don't use it in ranked, but yeah, try out the dragons. They're pretty fun. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and we will see you tomorrow. Thanks. All right, everybody, so we're going against a Leona and Yasuo deck, and we're going to use our dragons against it. Let's see how we do here. All right, so we get Herald of the Dragons. That is, like, a vital in this deck working properly. Um, for basically any deck we... or for any dragon deck, we need Herald of the Dragons. So we're going to play her turn two. And we draw Mobilize, which is great. So we're going to hope that this guy has no way to deal with our Herald of the Dragons. He's running um, Ionia and Targon, so they don't have a lot of removal. And we're pretty safe in playing the Herald of the Dragons whenever we want. Alright, so we are going to play our Bright Soul Protector on our Herald of Dragons here. This should dissuade him from attacking. Which is good for us. Um, or he will attack. And I'm actually just going to take him out with my Bright Still Protector here. I don't think there's really any point in not doing that, and I kind of dissuaded his his other unit from attacking here. Alright, so now we can play Screeching Dragon on turn 4, which is great. This is a 5 cost card. And yeah, so he's going to stun us here. Feels kind of bad, but he is, um, I guess, forced to use this Leona here earlier than maybe he wanted and we're just gonna have to um, skip the round we're not going to attack with our herald of dragons all right and we get concerted strike that's another good card here um really good card that we can use to kill his leona or now this raven guy 
So we're going to pass and let him attack, which he most likely is going to. Alright, so he uses Zenith Blade, that's even better, so he is he has absolutely no mana here. We're going to use Concerted Strike. We, we need to make sure the order is correct, so we, we target the... We use the our Herald of Dragons first, and then our Screeching Dragon, so the Screeching Dragon gets the buff. He kills the unit. Alright, and we buff it up, which is also good, because now we can threaten his... Um, his uh, Raven the Spear, whatever his name is. Okay, we get a good draw here. It's the Bright Steel Protector. This is really good for us. And he plays Yasuo, so of course I'm going to target the Yasuo here. And we're going to force out a um, Yasuo spell. I can't remember what it's called at the moment. If he has it. And he's emoting, so yeah, he's got it. Still Tempest. Okay, so he's going to use Still Tempest. Um, this is still really good because uh, I have the barrier, so he's not going to damage my dragon at all. So we get that out of him almost for free. He does level up his, uh, or, you know, work on leveling up his Yasuo, and he buffs his, his, uh, what's it called? The Fury Tail or whatever it is. Feyblade Twirler, yeah. The Fey Blade Twirler. Alright, so we're going to actually play our other dragon here. It might have been okay to kind of conserve our mana, because we do have a lot of spells in hand at the moment. But uh, yeah, we're just going to play our other dragon. Okay, so he's using Zenith Blade on his Yasuo. I don't really want to go for single combat before he buffs up, because he could have a deny. Alright, so he's using some of his daybreak units here. Setting up for a pretty good attack. I wish I had one more mana for this round, because then I could use um, Judgment. But, not much we can do about here. I'm kind of surprised that he didn't attack with everybody. And I'm going to take out most likely his... Um, Uh, Raven Daylight Spear here because I want I don't want him getting any more Daylight procs. This is going to allow me to kill both units. I do sacrifice my own, but I'm putting myself at the six attack stat so I can actually take that unit out. Take two units out here with one spell, which is super nice. And we're just going to end the round. Alright, so we could actually play Aurelian Soul this round. So we're going to use Mobilize for Aurelian Soul. It's kind of a lot of mana to use to get him down, but like I think the earlier we get this guy down, the better it's going to be for us. Um, we're also threatening quite a bit of damage. Okay, so he's using Zenith Blade again. And we're probably just going to end the round and be happy that we got Aurelian Soul down on round 8. And now we can work on leveling him up a little bit. Okay, we get the Charger. That's a pretty good card for this round because it's got a lot of health and or attack, so it's going to be able to help us level up Aurelian Soul. He's got 10 health as well, so it's hard for them to attack into him. And we've got some other ways to um, help our units here survive a little bit. So yeah, we're just going to work on leveling up our Aurelian Soul. So we're going to put down the Charger. Okay, he's got a 3 cost Leona. And if he attacks with all of his units, we're also keeping enough mana to use Judgment. So, um, we'll see what he does here. But Judgment with Aurelian Soul could just completely destroy it. And he actually doesn't even attack. He lets me waste my mana. Which I am completely fine with, because this is going to... You know, he doesn't get any damage onto me, and I get to level up Aurelian Soul. Alright, so we've got some pretty good cards here. Our Celestials are now zero, so we can we can basically try to get his denies out of him for zero mana. And just like that, he uses a deny. And I'm setting myself up for a uh, judgment here, is what I really want to do. So I'm trying to get all of his denies out of him that I can. 
and he's got another one, so I'm pretty safe with using Judgment here if I open attack with all of my units. I do, I mean, there is a possibility that he's got a third deny in hand, but it's really unlikely. So yeah, we're just going to attack with everybody here. And force him to block into us. I will protect you. Which he's going to do somewhat slowly here. Alright, and we're planning on using Judgment. Okay, so I'm actually going to try to get uh, one more Deny out of him possibly here. So, Or like another Steel Tempest. He still has mana for that, so still a little worried about that. Or the um, Tail of the Dragon or whatever, or not Tail, is it Tail? Um, yeah, so, so he hushes me. But that taps him under any mana to do anything, so now I can use Judgment to kill all of his units. And he only used Hush once, all he did was like trigger my, my spell shield. So this allowed me to win the game. Um, he didn't block Aurelian Soul. And the Overwhelm on my Charger was able to go through, so he kind of... He, he did something kind of bad there. There was no way he was going to win at that point, I think he was just Hushing to, to Hush.